So hello friends, welcome back once again to the live video of XBHP and this is XBHP Power Talks. So every time when we come online with this particular show, we bring some interesting personalities, we bring more powerful discussions, talks, and as you know, this particular uh, month is going uh, fully power packed for us. So in the beginning of the month, we've introduced uh, world's fastest motorcycle in our garage. And today we have introduced yet another amazing motorcycle in our garage that is Rocket 3, which is like world's biggest capacity motorcycle, uh, 2,500 cc's. But today, the interesting personality that we have got is somebody who is going to give run off run for their lives i can say because uh somebody who has been racing who has dominated the entire race tracks of indian motorcycling scene for a very long time to be more precise for two decades 1974 to 1994 not even a single race that has been lost by this gentleman so without any further ado i will actually do the honors of Inviting not anybody else but Mr. Subhash Chandra Bose, who is also known actually, also known as the Bullet Bose, not because he rides in and field, but for the speed that he used to ride at, he used to ride like a bullet, and it was very difficult to catch him on the racetracks. So I'll stop talking. I will introduce, I will bring Mr. Subhash and Bose here. Hello, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good evening, Dr. Chakruti. How are you? I'm doing great, good evening, sir. Good evening, so good evening to all the viewers also. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, first of all, without um, mm -hmm. taking any discussion further, because I actually know and I'm really, really inspired from you, uh, what you have done and what you are doing right now, even at this particular age, you are so active. So uh, I would want everybody else to know more about you. So why don't you just uh, do one thing? Just let uh, our audience uh, know more about you, our younger readers, the younger viewers that we have. So just a quick uh, run through about you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good evening, viewers. Uh, my name is uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. This uh, name, uh, I'm not a Bengali. I'm from South India. I'm from Andhra Pradesh. My grandfather was uh, uh, working with uh, Subhash Chandra Bose in the National Army. So he wanted one of the grandsons to have that name. So that is how I got this name uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. So initially I thought, what is this name? When I was studying in the school, people used to bully me, Bose, 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 Bose. I used to think, what? This name is uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. Uh, I was a little bit uh, uneasy uh, those days, the school times. But later on, when I came to know who Subhash Chandra Bose is and uh, the fame, whatever he had. So then I was feeling proud that I've got a very good name in uh, my father has uh, kept. So that is how it is. I'm from the South India. I'm from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I am now 70 years old and I still ride uh, motorcycles. And uh, the latest uh, motorcycle what I ride is an Interceptor 650. It's a very good motorcycle which I've been using it. I've been using a Royal Enfield bullet all my life. And initially, of course, uh, the first uh, vehicle which I rode was a Lambert scooter. I learned in the Lambert scooter, then slowly switched on to the Java 250s. I had a Java 250 for a very long time. And I've raced on the Java 250 also for two years. And then uh, slowly, I, I, in 1973, I switched on to the Royal Enfield bullet. See, I will tell you the story, uh, how uh, everything happened. He, see, those days, uh, there was no entertainment at all in Chennai or anywhere else if you take. it. Was, in Chennai, well, the only entertainment was the Marina Beach. We had the second largest beach in the world. Marina Beach is the second largest uh, beach in the world. So my father and my parents, they used to take us on weekends to the uh, Marina Beach. So initially... I, when I was studying in the school, I studied in Bethan Theosophical High School, Ariyar. When I was studying in the school, and uh, whenever a motorcycle goes on the road, uh, it used to attract me. The sound used to attract me, especially the Royal Enfield bullet. It had a very good thump. 
So I used to run out of the class and run to the road to see the, what bike it is and the things like that. So my school uh, principal and uh, my teachers, they complained uh, to my father saying that your son is not sitting in the class, he's running off. So what my father did is, he sent my auntie, that is my father's elder sister. He sent her to the school, he said, you go and sit every day near the school, make sure that this fellow run, doesn't run out of the class. Not the question of running out, he might go and uh, uh, go onto the road uh, to see it is a little dangerous. So that is how I the, the, the bug bet me that the sound, the thump of the Royal Enfield uh, is the first uh, thing which uh, gave me the inspiration. Then when during the uh, holiday, that is on weekends, my father used to take me to the Marina Beach. And in Marina Beach, I'll tell you, the first generation, and I'm talking about people who are elder to me, the first generation people, they all had fantastic motorcycles. They had the Norton Dominator, the Triumph uh, Tiger 100, the Speed Twin, the BSA Gold Star, BSA uh, Golden Flash, the uh, Royal Enfield Meteors. All these bikes were all uh, there those days. All the elite uh, people's sons, they all had uh, these bikes. Plus, on top of it, they had fantastic cars also. They had Austin, the Healy, the MG, and uh, the Jaguars. But all those people, they used to come only on the bikes to the beach uh, near the Gandhi statue. So whenever uh, the bikes are parked there, I used to go and stand next to the bikes and uh, I used to uh, get interested and I used to see what bike this is, what bike that is. Then these people, they were so generous, they used to ask me, what my dear friend, what are you looking? No, no, sir, this bike looks very nice. I just got two silencers. Uh, the, the bike sound is very good. Can you start the bike and show me? So they were generous and they were, I'll tell you, I'm very lucky that I, I'm born in the generation of gentlemen's generation. They're all perfect gentlemen, gentlemen's generation I was born. So they used to say, my dear friend, do you want to have a ride on this bike? They said, yes, I used to tell them, why don't you take me for a ride? See, like how in England, they had that uh, a Three Aces Cafe, where the cafe racer was born. Similarly, mm -hmm. the, these bikes, the, all these bikes used to be parked there and from the Gandhi statue to Marina, I mean uh, Buharis, there was, used to be a hotel called Buharis. It's about two kilometers from there. So what they used to do is they used to take us for a ride up and down. And uh, sometimes they used to have a small, uh, this thing also, who will go the fastest, like how they used to do on this cafe, cafe racer in the uh, three, three, three aces in uh, uh, London or UK. So, so everybody, but once I, I sit on a Norton, the next person, that is, I'll tell you the names also. This is Mr. Uh, uh, Dusty, Dastur. And uh, there was another person called uh, Menon. His name was Cutlet. He had the best bike. He had the Vincent Black Shadow also. He had Norton Dominators. Then uh, it was uh, Maha. Then uh, it was Damu. Then uh, Hari Rao was there. And uh, like this, a uh, lot of people who were uh, having these bikes, they used to come there and uh, they used to go up and down on this uh, marina beach and they used to take us for a ride. So that is how this bug uh, bit me. Then slowly, uh, of course, these people, because they are the first generation in uh, Chennai, the racing started somewhere in 1955. So these people, they used to go to the uh, track and they used to have a lot of fun there. And there used to be a, a lot of British people also in that one, John Day, who was uh, a racer in uh, UK, he was also here and uh, he used to ride a Triumph which belongs to Dusty. He, his bike, he used to take it and ride it. And uh, they used to have some small uh, drag race and small competitions there in Cholorum. Cholorum is a Second World War abandoned airstrip. So they, the surface was very good and uh, they used to get permission from the Air Force people, that is Tambaram Air Force Station. They used right. to give permission and then uh, uh, all these people, they used to have a lot of fun. They used to have some small, small competition races. They, even the cars used to be there, the, the, the MGs, the Jaguars, the Austin Geely, all these cars, uh, they used to be there and they used to uh, have small fun there. So racing started in Chennai in somewhere around 1955-56.
But right. the serious racing started uh, late 60s, maybe 65 onwards. See, see the first uh, Grand Prix, if you take the first Grand Prix was organized in 1971. But I started racing in 1968. 68 means these people who are uh, the first generation people, they introduced me to a person called Mr. Dwarakna. Is Dwaraknath is a person who's got the Lamrata uh, dealership and uh, uh, authorized service point. He used to prepare uh, Lamrata scooters for one Mr. Pratap. That Mr. Pratap used to get uh, uh, the Ancelotti kit, that is the racing kit from Italy. So I used to go and see, I, I said before uh, uh, racing, I thought I learned how uh, the the scooter works, the mechanism, what is the piston, what is the clutch, how to ride, all these things. So, right. my, my age was about 17, 18 years. I didn't have a license. So, if I wanted to enter the races, but those days, the rule was, you should have a driving license. Until 18 years, you can't get a license. So, I was not allowed to be, uh, the, the rule says, you have, should have a road license. So, I was, I was not able to go to the race track to race. But, these people, when they go to the racetrack, they used to take me. I became very friendly with them and uh, they became very uh, helpful to me. And uh, they also, they said, come, let, come, my dear friend, you are interested in this. So they used to take me there. Mr. Dwaraknath was the first person. In fact, my father was owning a Lamberta scooter. So I asked my father, can I borrow your scooter to do racing? He said, uh, do you know how to ride? He asked me. I said, yes, I will teach. I will show you whether I am able to ride this because I was very sure small and uh, short also. So what I did is I kept the scooter there. I asked all my friends to come and hold the scooter. And then uh, I kept a big stone there so that I can keep my leg. And uh, my friends used to push the scooter and I put it on a second gear and the vehicle used to start. So I used to go around my, <laughs> my house because those days there's no right. traffic at all. So my father, he said, oh, my son, see, I could see his heart swelling with uh, pride. I said, oh, my son yeah, is able to ride. Huh? Really my true. father, my, his, I could see the, his heart is swelling with pride in his face. Ah, then I said, okay, right. my father is, uh, is, uh, came for it. So then I told him I want to race. He said, no, 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 you still not got the license. So after you get the license, we'll think about it. Then I said, why don't you give me a scooter? I want to learn how the vehicle uh, performs, uh, all these things. Mr. Dwaraknath was very, very helpful. He said, don't worry, come, I will teach you everything. Because my father used to send the vehicle for servicing there. So this is how I learned. First, initially, I learned how the scooter works. What is the piston? What is this? I used to remove everything. I fix it back. So hands-on work, I learned. See, when you want to do racing, unless you know the mechanism, how each and every part works, the suspension, the tires, the brake, engine, piston, what is the timing, carburetor, then when you ride, you will know what is happening and you can give feedback to the person who is going to tune your bike. So right. I learned it myself. So I became a tuner and a rider also initially. So first time I went in 1968, I took the, I 68, I got the license because I, I was 18 years. I got the license. Immediately I became a member in the Madras Motor Sports Club. So and the moment I became the member, I started going uh, to the racetrack and uh, started learning. See, those days, I'm talking about 70s, 80s, 90s. Everyone in Chennai, uh, when the year starts, January, February, everybody will get excited uh, that there is some uh, excitement is going to happen, the solar races. Everybody right from the rickshaw puller to the managing director and chairman, they all used to participate in the solo program races. Right, they, right. It, was, it was a festival of speed. Uh, and uh, that is the only entertainment. And since Chennai, it's got a lot of automobile industries around. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the tire manufacturers are here, the piston manufacturers, the valves, the, the vehicle manufacturers. Everybody was around Chennai. They used to call this as a Detroit of uh, India. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. so actually, uh, talking about your racing experiences, one somebody has actually specifically asked, and luckily I have that photo. Somebody has asked for. Um, let me just quickly go and this. Yes. So the question, the point was, sir, show your rolling trophy, uh, which you get from MGR. So I, I think um, I do have a photo of that. 
um, if I'm not, if I'm sure, if this is the trophy that he is talking about, this so is the trophy. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I can show you the big trophy which is there on the left hand side with the MJR signed. Just one second, just hold on. One second. I... Sure. So that he do chi akra panje galma. So while sir comes back with the trophy, I am really always excited to talk to him because the kind of experience that he brings with the racing and everything, it is amazing. And there is so much to learn from both sir and people think that, okay, going to the racing and just you have a bike, you just go on the roads and start racing. It's not like that. There is a lot of hard work as, as sir just said that you have to know about your machines from each and everything you need to know how your uh, bikes working how your clutch works how your gear works what kind of engine uh, you are riding on what kind of engine oil goes into the uh, motorcycle that you want to ride on the race tracks and then in his times uh, when he was in the racing or when he entered in the racing the rules were different and so as he said like okay you have to have a legal driving license which is can you see can you see the trophy now? So can you see? yes, now sir is back. Let me quickly go to him. Yes, here it is, sir. Yeah, that, that is the one in that sign that I gave it. Can sir, you see the trophy? Little, little far, then uh, we can definitely yeah, see it clearly. Can, a little far. Uh, can you see now? Yes, we can see that. This, this is the this is the trophy where India has signed it. He signed it and given it to me. India's best rider. Can you see wow. this? Yes, we can definitely see that. You can just bring it close to uh, close to the trophy so that everybody can see that. Yeah, you can bring it here. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, this is the trophy which he signed. It. Oh, lovely. And I'll show you the rolling trophy also. Yes, definitely, because that has uh, been requested uh, specifically. Uh, <laughs> those trophies there, you can see. The micro boss rolling trophy. Can you see? Can you see the rolling trophy, micro boss rolling trophy on top? Oh, yes. Now, yes, we can see that. And the other one, two rolling trophies. That's it. One. Can you see the other one? Uh, yeah, we can see that. So, two rolling trophies. That means two rolling trophies means six years I have to win continuously. Wow. So, and this is Lifetime Achievement Award uh, trophy. This, uh, this one, this one. Can you see this? Yes, sir. We can see that. Yeah, these are all the these are the little trophies, and here you can see some more trophies here, which is your XBHP trophy. Oh, yes, sir. I'm so <laughs> proud to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this trophy is here. These are all uh, trophies. Uh, of course, the other trophies are all uh, up there. Uh, Since you wanted to see the trophies, I had uh, taken the laptop uh, up and down. I hope no, uh, that's okay, sir. Button. That's great. And uh, thanks to your son who is doing all the efforts to take it, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. show us all the uh, trophies all around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, sir, uh, uh, I have uh, a follow up question with that because I know looking at all those trophies. We all know, uh, and I have already said in the beginning that you've been an undefeated champion between 1974 and 1994. So how did you manage such a dominant and consistent performance? Because uh, racing is something like you have to be very consistent if you have to win so many championships. So how did you do that? Uh, the secret of uh, that is, first thing, I have to thank Royal Enfield which is a very reliable motorcycle. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that never let, till today, my Royal Enfield has never let me down. I've gone all over India, up and down to Leh, Ladakh, and up to China. And on racing, you know, those days racing was 50 laps race. And 50 we laps. 50 laps race. Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, we used to prepare the motorcycle meticulously. That is every race. We from right from the front wheel to the back wheel. 
we make sure that everything is perfectly all right there there should not be an iota of doubt also if the, something is wrong please change that is the right. way we we, we uh, prepared the bike and our first generation people who taught us all these things we were listening to whatever they told us because we were all young uh, young blood so when uh, the first generation people the elderly people who taught us how to uh, prepare a motorcycle so we listened to them and uh, one of my uh, mentor i can i can say mentor mr vidya prakash he is from kaimatur you would have heard about his name he yeah. dominated uh, uh, in the solar ram races for uh, similar same time he is still racing he is 75 years old but he is wow. still racing the car and he is still wow. winning also and he is still oh. winning also oh that yes. is awesome he is still racing yes, yes. Wow. he is still racing and he is winning also he is not just not racing he is wow. he prepared the vehicle very meticulously so he has taught us a lot of things how to prepare a motorcycle what you should take care here there so he is our, our mentor and he is our godfather so he taught us a lot of things because his fiat used to be the fastest fiat in india oh nice yes yes you, you have not heard about mr vidya prakash so i yeah, no, I, heard, i heard about him yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so no, he is uh, he is 75 years old he is 5 years older than me but we yeah. both started racing together but maybe he started 2 uh, 3 years before me and uh, we used to go and ask him and uh, he was so helpful for us uh, and telling us what to take care what not to take care how to prepare a motorcycle what meeting he prepares his own cars he's got only yeah. one mechanic and he doesn't go anywhere else he prepares the car in his own house so in his office and meticulously he prepares so all his uh, guidance uh we started preparing this motorcycle so no. so sir, the, the, uh, i have so sir i have a question look so when you said like uh, his he has got a fastest of the vehicles so you must have ridden so many motorcycles in the entire time frame so can yes. you name the motorcycles you have raced on and which one was the fastest among the ones that you rode and if there is any one of your favorite yes i have raced right from 50 cc to 350 cc wow all <laughs> categories all category 50 cc my moped used to do 115 kilometers on the streets a tv wow. moped 49 <laughs> cc only 49 cc only and my bike my moped used to do uh, 115 kilometers on the streets in solar and wow. then my bullet used to do 100 miles that is 160 100 miles it used to do and wow. uh, then awesome. after that my i raced an rx 100 which used to do uh, close to 145 150 kilometers then after that i raced the rd 350 the rd 350 which i raced was doing any like uh, close to 200 kilometers wow. then mr kari vardhan mr kari vardhan you have heard about him lucky mr kari vardhan a yeah. formula uh, racer so he said both what are you doing just uh, just riding all all these indian bikes why don't you ride an imported motorcycle i said sir i don't have money to buy an imported motorcycle what to do he said don't worry i will get you the motorcycle so he got me the tz 350 yamaha and uh, yeah. that is the bike which i rode of course i i should uh, be very frank with you uh, we were all riding bikes which are doing 10 bhp to 20 bhp to 30 bhp like that straight away sitting on a 100 bhp was a nightmare and that bike used to do 240 km on the streets 240 km and literally the bike used to float because the, the uh, solar ram race track is a t uh, you so the there used to be some cross wind uh, from the uh, solar ram lake side so as you yeah. come there because it got that full fairing the bike used to shift over to one side we used to be so scared and it that bike every gear it will be 240 kilometers was the maximum speed i ridden that is the speed on the tz wow so which one was of your course. favorite like i'm sure it will be very difficult to choose which was no, your no, favorite there is no doubt bullet is my favorite royal enfield bullet is my favorite wow. come what may whatever bike i've ridden all bikes uh, all over the world that is the yamaha the honda the bmw everything but i don't know i got some attachment to the royal enfield bullet 
And you know, one thing I'll tell you, I've traveled on the bullet, 500 kilometers at a stretch from here to Coimbatore, from here to Hyderabad. I've gone to Leh, Ladakh. You know, the bike is so comfortable. So the Royal Enfield bullet originally was designed by passionate engineers in UK. Yeah. So every bit right from the front wheel to the back wheel, if you go in detail, there will be some definitely very good uh, uh, technology in that. But the only thing is, uh, Royal Enfield uh, did not manufacture it properly. That's the problem. <laughs> Otherwise, so maybe, one of the maybe they can take a feedback from you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Maybe, they, maybe they will uh, see this live session. Uh, uh, no, no, they, uh, of course, the, the older bike, uh, people still, still Royal Enfield has got a premium. The old bike, 1969 model, it goes for about a lakh of rupees now. Whereas, yeah. if, uh, if, uh, when the bike was sold, it was only 4,500 rupees in 1969. It was only oh. 4,500 rupees. But now today, that same bike, anybody wants to buy the bike, you have to pay a lakh of rupees. That is the uh, value that bike has got. Actually, sir, that time, uh, 4,000 was also the sim similar value yes. of one lakh yes, now. Yes, so I tell you, <laughs> when, I, when I started racing, the first race, I only spent 100 rupees because petrol was only one rupee. Yeah. And yeah. going up to the track and coming, 100 rupees was my expense, the first race. After that, the second and third race, I spent about 500 rupees. And that 500 rupees was sponsored by one Mr. Neelakanta here, who was uh, also a member in the, our club. He said, boss, come, I'll sponsor you. Because I used to struggle uh, to make ends meet. So Mr. Neelakanta here uh, called me and said, boss, come, I'll sponsor you. He gave me 500 rupees sponsored. 500 was a big money those days. Absolutely. <laughs> so it is, still, it is still a big money for a lot of people. But yes, yeah. during those days, that must be a very, very big amount. Yes, yes, yes. It was a big money and uh, they were so generous. And, you know, when uh, they see that uh, our boy, that is, I'm a Chennai person. When a person uh, was winning races, uh, they were, everybody came forward uh, to help me. I'll tell you, those days, all the manufacturers uh, in and around Chennai, I will tell you how my bike was prepared, actually. Initially, my friend, Mr. Narayanan, he, he, he owns the Royal Enfield Bullet, which I raced first in 1973. He yeah. offered me, because uh, there were a lot of my friends there who had Javas and uh, the Bullets. After the Lamberta, I, I raced on the Java. My friend uh, Rajeshwar Ramprasad is the Raja of Ramna. He had the Java. He said, boss, you have some talent. Why don't you race the Javas? I said, man, no bike, what to do? He said, no, 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 no. Uh, I'll give you my bike. So when he gave me his bike, my other friends, they each one pulled in 100 rupees, 200 rupees. And then they said, we'll all pull and we'll make sure that boss uh, enters the races and uh, uh, wins. So my friend uh, Rajesh gave me the bike. My friend Dilip, Dilip who was my uh, schoolmate or my classmate right from childhood, he helped me. And one more Ram Prasad, now he is in US. He also helped me. And uh, Rajesh gave me the bike. That is. The Javas, I started with the Rajesh who gave me the bike and uh, helped me in. Uh, and when I when I come, I came second. Both the years I came second. So they were also proud that the, one of his friends is coming second. Then what my friend Narayanan did is he said, no, 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 boss, this uh, Java is too slow. I want you to race my bullet. So he offered me his bullet. So 1973, I took the bullet and without even uh, thinking, I I led the race. For that one full straight lead. The bike was so powerful and so nice. Bike used to handle like on dream. You put the yeah. bike into the corner. And I will tell you one more thing. I have never seen anybody falling off a Royal Enfield bullet. The bike is so stable. And and the bike used to listen to your command. If you take, put the bike on the left, bike will go there. It will not uh, skid here, though, nothing. It had a nice good uh, wheelbase and a very good uh, trail and uh, uh, rake angle. So bike used to handle like a dream. So right. when I rode the bullet, I came first in 1973. They were all so happy that uh, I had come first. So that was the first race which I won. And uh, right. all my friends, uh, they were so happy. Then they said, no, that was a club band race. They said, no, you have to enter the open class. Open class means in 1973, the federation was formed. Till then, the federation was not there. There were only certain rules. The club rules were there. 
they used to right. say this is the pc you have to raise and things like that so 1974 that is the first time i entered the open class in the open class when i entered there some a lot of technology is that you have to make your sure that the bike is fast second thing you have to make sure that the bike is reliable also 50 laps in the 49th lap if the bike packs up finished your race is over so we we prepared the bike and for preparing the bike for uh, the open class one mr ashok krishnan he is already a champion on the 250 he is raced in sri lanka in the in the 70s and uh, there was you see we uh, india and sri lanka they were very friendly they used to have uh, uh, racing was recognized in sri lanka those days it used to be called ceylon not sri lanka ceylon so hmm. uh, people from uh, india used to be invited so mr baskar rao used uh, the uh, godfather for me on racing because he is the one who first uh, started racing the bullets and he won the first grand prix baskar rao was a very good rider and very very good person who helped all of us so baskar rao uh, prithvi bawaja was another person from bangalore who actually recognized me after the 1974 races he took me into the factory team then badradri then uh, hebar ashok krishnan all these people they all had gone to sri lanka for racing in the right. 70s i'll tell you to go to sri lanka we used to buy a ticket for 135 rupees there used to be a train in egmore we used to sit in the train and uh, put the bike i i used to go along with them i never raced so you go up to rameswaram you uh, unload your bike there is a ferry 3 hours ferry yeah. from uh, rameswaram to talemanar all right you go on the ferry. entry of sri lanka yeah yeah then we put the bikes again in the train and we go to colombo so right. that is how we went to colombo this adventurous thing all my friends uh, ashok krishnan baskar rao uh, badradri hepar uh, prithvi bawaja these people all raced in sri lanka i never raced in sri lanka i only went along with them and the following years in 1976 jk brought their cars that is lalwani and uh, nazir hussain they were the uh, top drivers of this the formula cars that is the uh, indian uh, formula cars so they also were invited to sri lanka so mr ajay pat singhania jk uh, tires uh, chairman managing director he said why you want to go and this, put the cars in the train why you want to go very he hired an aircraft safari airways we all went in that aircraft we landed in the race track itself katunaga airport we see airport and the race track was next to each other so <laughs> uh, in style we went in style we went yeah. and landed there we parked the plane and the plane was a pitch uh, pit for us we used to so sit you, in the plane and watch <laughs> you all reached that you all reached there like a taliba <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, we we also went in the aircraft that is uh, mr ajay pat i we have to thank ajay pat singhania who is no more he uh, only arranged the aircraft safari airways we all went right. there that time somender singh also came from uh, uh, mysore he is a java rider he is he is also a champion in java so ashok krishnan somender singh baskar rao badradri all these people went there then after say, in 76 that is in 74 when i won the grand prix then they saw some potential in me they said okay boss is riding consistently and uh, the factory people approached that is factory people means mr prithvi bawaja of the factory team uh, authority so he had gone and uh, uh, recommended my name to mr sr subramaniam who is the managing director of royal enfield so so he called me and he said boss are you interested in racing i said yes sir i am interested in racing i will i will help you prithvi bawaja said uh, you are a very good rider so we will help you because i had no other go because i didn't have a bike i didn't have a sponsor so immediately when the factory recognized me i said yes i will uh, join the team so i went and joined the team and uh, then there was no looking back at all from 76 onward prithvi bawaja he is an actually he is an engineer who did his engineering in us very knowledgeable person he taught us so much and he had a person called uh, pashupati his right hand he is the one who always prepares all the bikes uh, the bikes were prepared for me baskar rao badradri everybody so and prithvi bawaja used to race the crusader one certified crusader 
the crusaders used to be a very good competition for the radu that 170 cc class was a very competitive class where uh, the see i'll tell you one more thing those days all the factories had teams the swega moped i don't know whether you have heard this. that is the first moped in india uh, the swega moped they used to be prepared i mean they have a factory in tirupati they used mm -hmm. to have a team the swega moped uh, that they used to have a team then rajdoot uh, from escort they had a team factory yeah. team uh, royal enfield had the uh, one side the crusader team then java had a team from uh, java rustam harmasdi the lakshman rao sinde they all are factory riders they used to come and uh, race royal enfield had a 350 class race so all the manufacturers used to take part so mm -hmm. the competition was very good and there was also private jets who, who had entered so uh, that is how racing started and one more thing for me initially uh, the manufacturers around we wanted to have by get a high compression piston so unless we go to england those days importing any one small part also is very difficult so we went and approached india pistons mr n venkat ramani on ramani mr venkat venkat ramani who is no more just recently passed away he said uh, boss if you can give me one sample i will uh, prepare the pistons for you so uh, one of my friend had the high compression piston heplite piston he went again went and gave to him, sir can you make this piston for us for racing immediately he said no without even thinking he said don't worry just give me some time he made 100 pistons and he gave free for everybody he, they have a an uh, outlet called george jokes so he gave all everybody whoever is racing uh, bullets everybody got 10.5 is to 1 piston so when you put a 10.5 is to 1 piston you can't uh, use ordinary fuel you have to have high octane so we all our friends those days mr vidya prakash also was a uh, uh, member of the flying club mr dusty was in the flying club and one of my friend dilip i told you know he is my childhood friend he was learning uh, flying so he used to get the 100 of 10 130 it's called the downgraded uh, fuel it used to be in green color so we used to put only the bike will run only with that high octane so the moment we got that high octane petrol and the the, the other combination was the castrol castrol oil we used to use castrol r it is a vegetable based oil meant only for racing wow castrol was so helpful for us they used to import that oil only for us on 5 liter can and for that 5 liter can which is peanuts i used to write full castrol on my name on my bike yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, 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 so uh, not many people would be knowing about that particular fact that the that particular grade of oil was at that kind of uh, uh, it's level a vegetable it's a vegetable based yeah. oil only for racing they used to import it and uh, i i wrote the castrol name all over my bike so when the golden jubilee happened in chennai the uh, chairman managing director came from england his name is good i think he saw this photograph he said what is this how much have you sponsored him he has written our name everywhere no sir we gave only one 5 liter uh, can for that he has given he said no 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 put a life size photograph of subhash chandra bose bike photo in our office so they put a life size photograph of wow. my bike in castrol office in chennai those days wow so wow. <laughs> so castrol people helped us india piston people helped us then since my friends were all uh, doing flying the pushpa aircraft had the sodium filled valves the sodium filled valves when you put it on the vehicle it will uh, bring the temperature down in the combustion chamber so my friends they got the old valves uh, the sodium filled valves and we turned it and put it on to the our uh, royal enfield bullet in the uh, exhaust valve so immediately the bike transformed because the combustion chamber temperature itself came down then what we did is since it is a 50 lap race bike had only one plug the other side it had the decompressor so the royal enfield had a decompressor in the bike so we removed one uh, decompressor put another plug put two coils and it was running parallelly why we put that plug is for reliability because those days we had only this micro plug and klc plug and some, some we never got ngk we never heard about ngk those days <laughs> so we used to, and uh, we don't know whether the plug will last all these things so for safety sake including because those days even in the aircraft they used to have two plugs right 
So we put two plugs there, one plug this side, one plug this side, and the fuel used to go inside, and the combustion used to take place very nice. And the engine note totally changed, and it is asked for better uh, uh, fuel uh, um, tuning on the carburetor. Yeah. So right. What we did is those days we never had carburetors, and uh, the when the, in 1968-69 when I started racing, Mr. Muthukrishnan. He is the chairman of uh, UCAL fuel system and things like that. He saw me on the racetrack. He said, Boss, why don't you come and join my company? They, they are the manufacturers of carburetors, Solex carburetors and Ibex carburetors, things like that. They were the suppliers for Ambassador, Fiat, uh, Herald, motorcycles, everything. So I said, when a job is getting, I, when I'm getting an offer as a job, I said, I went and joined them in the R&D. So immediately I said, I want an Amal carburetor because Amal carburetor is meant for the four stroke. Mikuni carburetor is only for the two stroke. If you put a Mikuni carburetor on a four stroke, it is very difficult to tune because it's got different tubes. So yeah. Amal is the best carburetor for the British bike. So he they imported a carburetor, uh, Amal um, monoblo, I mean Amal Sun, uh, Amal uh, concentric, and then Amal Sun of Amal. There are two carburetors. Both they imported it, and we tuned the bike with the Amal carburetor. That's all. Bike transform. The transform means the bike started going faster and faster because we never knew that this plug is going to do so much. Only for reliability we put, but but for our luck, the bike started performing uh, differently. So, and the second when the bike started performing, bike did not start handling. The handling became a little difficult because the tires were not able to take the power and this thing. So that day, those days we used to use the Dunlop uh, Universal. But those days, the we had a lot of uh, people from abroad coming, right from uh, UK, Sri Lanka, Japan, uh, Kenya, all these days. So right. at that time, the Isle of Man was won by the British bike with the Dunlop TT100. It's called TT100. I don't know whether you heard. It's called the Dunlop TT100. It's one of the best tires those days. So the British people, they bought a set of tires for me. I said I wanted a tire. They bought the tires. The moment the, when I raced, I was doing, I started racing and my lap timing was two minutes, one second. That is the fastest I did those days. Wow. In seven, that is still very fast, even for yeah. the today's standards. Yeah. <laughs> now, the moment I switched on to the Dunlop TT100, I cut five seconds. The bike became so good, bike started handling and I did one minute, 55 seconds. It was so fast and the bike used to handle so nicely. The tire was flexing nicely, nice grip. It's called Dunlop TT100. So those tires actually gave us a lot of. Grip. That is the time when MRF uh, jumped into the racing scene. So they bought their tires. They said, "Why don't you try our tires?" We fitted their tires, and we were not able to handle the bike. The bike was shattering all over. Then I told them, "Your comfort is not all right. See, this tire is giving so much of performance." So yeah, please so, check what the. Hello, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, sir, that's okay. Please go yeah. ahead. So, we, we, Mr. Maman Mapley, he is the chairman, managing director of MRF. He is a down to earth person. He came to the track and he said, Boss, we will develop that Indian tire. Why do you want to use a Dunlop TD100? We will develop the tires. So I said, Okay, fine. But the present tire, what you have given, is not good. We will not uh, ride with that because bike is not handling. So, they came. We took about 10 bikes to the track, 10 riders. Took the competitive tires. Those days there used to be a tire called Firestone, Seat, Dunlop, all these tires. On the, the only three motorcycles were there. That is Rajdu, Java, and Bullet. So these are the only three manufacturers. We fitted all the tires on uh, these vehicles and including the MRF tires. We did 50 lap clockwise, 50 lap anti-clockwise to see how the tires are behaving. And we put this uh, Dunlop TT100 also. Dunlop TT100 was out of the world. And of course, the Indian Dunlop uh, Universal was good, the Firestone was good, and the uh, MRF uh, was not that good. So immediately they checked what the compound was, and they went and did a lot of research. That time, Mr. Maman Maple was there, and Mr. Nauro, Nauro, Nauroj, he was the uh, general manager for marketing. Very nice gentleman. And then Xavier, Mr. Xavier was in the R&D. They all came to the track. Mr. Maman Maple was sitting in the hot sun in the track. And we developed the, the initial the MRF tires were developed by me and my friends, whoever came to the track. 
who helped us riding the bike 50 lap clockwise, 50 lap anti-clockwise. That is how MRF uh, uh, came up in the, the, into the racing. And MRF came, Castrol came, India Pistons. Then I told you about this sodium filled valves, which uh, we got it from the aircraft. We put that, we got very good performance in that. Then we went and asked uh, uh, Rane Valves, Mr. L. Ganeshan. He is uh, uh, one of the uh, organizing committee. So I said, we want some valves, why don't you have? He immediately made the sodium filled valves for us. So everybody uh, helped us in uh, doing. See, those days we cannot import anything. Everything right. was, all the components which ran on my bike is all made in India. Right. And then what happened? Those days my cylinder block was casting. That also you used to have a lot of heat. So Mr. Vidya Prakash said, why, why, why are you using a uh, cast iron block? I will make aluminum uh, cylinder block. I said, how to make? You don't worry. Come to Coimbatore. Indocell Autosell. There are two companies. They are OE manufacturers. So he said, I know those people very well. So he said, first give me one week's time. He went there. He said, I want an aluminum uh, block for the Royal Enfield. They prepared it, machined it. Then he said, boss, please come. I took the train from there and went to Coimbatore. Saturday, Sunday morning, the blocks were there. I brought it, put it on the bike. Immediately, that the cooling, uh, the overheating uh, system uh, changed. So, the cylinder blocks were made by Mr. Vidhi Prakash from uh, Indo Shell and Auto Shell. Then, yeah. Mr. Karivardhan was so enthusiastic. He said, Boss, I will prepare uh, the camps. He prepared the racing camps. Um, the original timing was 30, 60, 75, 35. He said, I'll get you 40, 80, 80, 40. That is the timing. So, the, the moment Karivardhan made this camp, he came and put it onto the crankcase. The camps could not turn because the camp lobe was so big. So we had to grind the crankcase for the camp to rotate. And that uh, camp, I'll tell you, uh, it uh, worked wonders. The power came out so much and he, we had to change the sprockets also because out of the corner, uh, you know, there, there used to be a, a rev band. Uh, so the low end, it never used to perform. High end, it used to go um, like nobody's business. So we had to change the sprocket because we had three U-turns. First one U-turn, then second U-turn. Out of the U-turns, the bike will, uh, will die because we have to keep the revs very high. So we changed the sprockets. So the camps were made by Mr. Uh, Karivardhan, the racing camps. Then right. this aluminum cylinder, it had a cast chain sleep. So what happened is in Tirupati, where the Swega mopeds are made, they had the technology from Italy in 1960s itself, Nicastle coating. When you put Nicastle coating onto the aluminium block, that also heat dissipates because you are taking off the sleeve. The cast iron sleeve is removed. The Nicastle coating is coated onto the aluminium itself. So, Sibar Auto, that is the Swega people, they got the technology from because the Swega moped had uh, this technology. So, they said, no, no, we'll help you. Even though I was a competitor for them, I used to raise the moped, TVS moped. Even though I was a competitor, they were very helpful. They said, we'll uh, coat Nicastle coating on your block. And then they did the Nicastle coating on the my cylinder block. And then bike differently transformed very well. And then I told you, you know, I did 1 minute 55 seconds. Then yeah. once I did all these things, uh, timing came down. Bike was doing 100 miles. So I was competing against uh, Norton Manx. Mr. Jinadasa used to come uh, from uh, Sri Lanka. But of course, I was not able to overtake him. We were only tailing him. But we were happy that at least our Royal Enfield, well, that's a thoroughbred uh, racing motorcycle, uh, not on Manx 500cc. Uh, we were able to be along with him. And uh, he was doing 100 plus miles. We were doing 100 miles. So the competition was very good. Mr. Friki Khan, Raja Pereira, Raja Tinnadore. Bartha, Miranda, all these people used to come from Sri Lanka. They used to bring the Yamaha t and the Honda uh, uh, 4, 4, 4, 4 5 or something. It's called some uh, nice name it had. Uh, that bike won once, one, one year. That's a fantastic Honda. It's a very rare Honda with Bartha, Miranda got it from there. Of course, from uh, Kenya, we, we, we got uh, Bill Digaris and uh, Dalji Ch Singh Chagar. They bought the Yamahas from there. In fact, I used to race on an ordinary helmet, Indian made helmet. Then they said, boss, you're racing a bike which is doing 100 miles. Why don't you get a good helmet? I said, what to do, sir? I don't have it. 
they bought a bell helmet for me from uh, Kenya and presented the helmet to me. That is the uh, helmet which I'm using, which is written post on the uh, in the photograph. You can see that white helmet. Yeah. Uh, bell helmet was given by Mr. Bill Digaris. He bought it and gave it to me. So this is how we travel. And then the, all these people in and around uh, Chennai, the manufacturers came and helped us. They were all very, very helpful. And uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Pasupati was there, who was the right hand man for uh, Priji Bhavaja, who meticulously prepared the bike. You asked me a question, how is that your bike never uh, packed up at all? So uh, the bike was prepared so meticulously. Only one race, uh, I think in 1982 or something, uh, I was leading the race. And in the last uh, 48th lap or something, uh, the oil was coming out from the breather and it was uh, hitting my tire. So what I did is I didn't want to risk the race. So I slowed down. The 49th lap I slowed down and I thought I'll cruise. By the time uh, uh, the Java, which was prepared in Pune, Kochar, he overtook me and he finished the race there that, uh, that year. And uh, after that, uh, I think Katie Jaikumar, he also finished. Because I, I wanted to finish the race. I didn't want to stop or I didn't want to fall. So that was the race when uh, the Javas uh, came first in one race uh, in the Grand Prix. So, so this is how I ended. Yeah, tell me, so please. please uh, the racing, uh, the racing uh, scene during those times were were very different than what we have now. So, what is your like, uh, like if I would like to understand from your perspective that uh, what do you think? Like, uh, how is the uh, current trend of motorsports in India? Like, how do you perceive that? No, no. One thing I'll tell you: people who raced during the I'll tell you, it's the golden era for Indian motorsport, 1955 to 1989, till it was Solaram. Uh, it is the, it's called the golden era of Indian motorsport. Everybody who raced on the each and every class, that is the Rajput class, Mr. Badradi was there, Prem was there, then uh, Namazi was there, Hebar was there. All these people who raced those bikes, they also knew how to uh, prepare, prepare their motorcycles and how they knew what is handling, what is the technology on the motorcycle. So each and every class, the person who rode had very good knowledge and they know what, what they have to do for the handling, what for the power. And similarly, in the 135, all these top uh, riders were there. Similarly, in the 250 class, Ashok Krishnan was there, Somander Singh was there, the factory team, Hormuz, uh, Lakshman Rao and Shinde was there, then MG Ashok was there. Then from Pune, we used to get uh, Surjit Singh. Uh, see, everybody who rode uh, a bike, they knew what the bike was and they knew what. So there was a lot of reliability and the bikes were also very powerful. In the Royal Infield class, I was there. Mr. Bhaskar Rao was there. Patradi also rode. Uh, Rams Ravi, uh, Ravi, one of my friends, he also rode. Ramnathan was there. A.T. Jaikumar was there. Then uh, Jafar Ali. All these people, they all knew about the motorcycle and they know what is it. And one more thing, uh, each and every class had 30 motorcycles minimum. Right. I'll show you, I, I don't know whether uh, I can uh, show you the photograph. You can see in the start line, the number of bikes taking off. Each class, that is, the, the races used to be concurrent. 175, 250 and 350 used to be concurrent. So the fastest bikes were standing in the front, then the 250 will stand, then the 175 will stand. You can see at least minimum 60, 70 bikes on the track. Of course, the track was very wide. It can take 60, 70 bikes. And uh, all the bikes were reliable. Each and every one used to finish the race. And riding for 50 laps, after 50 laps, we used to come and uh, get on. We never used to feel tired at all. Those days, we never had uh, energy thing. No Red Bull, nothing, no <laughs> mineral water. Huh? We used to take only our dairy, that red is water. And we never felt sick at all. Huh? So, like... Now, uh, so, sir, I have a question. Uh, I have a question. So, during those days, do you, uh, do racers used to have a crew like we have uh, now? Because nowadays, we all, all have those pit crews and other uh, supporting members. Do you used to have such people? No, no, no. We, see, for me, Mr. Pashupati was there. And one more person called Session. He 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 had been working with the, the Royal Enfield dealer for uh, right from childhood. So Session and Mr. Paspati used to be with me. And each and every person had only one or two mechanics only. Of course, all the, you know, 
the the uh, it used to be called the all india race meet every club in india every club in india right from the madras motor sports club bangalore motor sports club coimbatore motor sports club hyderabad andhra pradesh calcutta motor sports club para pune pune was the only team uh, only club they had the only two winners it's called the para motorcycle then the iarc all these people all the clubs used to come all the clubs used to bring their teams team team there used to be a team manager there used to be a big contingent contingent the coming there each and every class they used to have at least minimum 5 6 bikes all in bikes and cars so each and every club the representation was at least 10 bikes and at least 10 cars was there from each and every top so you will have minimum about 100 150 bikes and about nearly 100 cars in the race track of course it was only heralds phs and ambassadors rajdoot Lambrada scooter, of course, Lambrada scooter. I have to mention the Don Patrick from Pune. He bought a Nealer, which was so fast. And then uh, Abdul Samad was there from uh, Bombay. And then we had uh, Sujat Bai in Chennai. Pratap, he is the person I told you know who got the Ancelotti kit from Italy. He used to race a scooter. Then now later on uh, his son uh, raced Chris. He raced the scooter there. So there never used to be a big uh, crew, but. Lot of friends used to come. You know, on the race track, fifty thousand people crowd used to be there on the main stage to see the race. Fifty thousand people, and uh, people going from here to Chennai to the race track. It used to be traffic jam. People used to leave at four o'clock in the morning to go because it's about thirty thirty-five kilometers. So right. you get caught in the traffic jam. So people uh, used to leave at four o'clock in the morning. One more thing, the government of Tamil Nadu was very 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 helpful. People who never had transport, all the depots, the transport from the government transport, the bus uh, people, each and every place. That is, we had uh, Mailapur, Mati Nagar, Ma Adiyar. There should be depots. So, all our special buses used to go to the track. What? Not one bus from each depot. One ten buses used to go. So, all our special. So, so many people used to come by buses from there. And if you see, there'll be hundreds of buses. Uh, the state transport buses uh, parked in. Uh, the track see everybody used to be coming people used to come in auto rickshaw people used to come in the cycle rickshaw right and uh, it, it was a it was a festival of speed that is uh, january and february we got two weekends right so everybody uh, used to enter okay. yeah so sir uh, i'm sorry uh, i'm interjecting in the between uh, but uh, because we have a uh, time limitation also with us because the, the amount of experience the knowledge and yeah. the exciting I, I, things I, I, that you have to share I, is too no, much no, I, have to, <laughs> no, i have to tell you some more thing see yeah. uh, i started racing in the four stroke in right. 1984 uh, when the two stroke came in the rd350 and the 100 cc everybody said boss the enough of your uh, racing you have been winning so many years in the four stroke your game is over they said boss game is over the, the two stroke era has come so i didn't know what to do i said okay then mr tt uh, raghu uh, is one of our uh, old friends he said we will start a team team tantex in that our uh, my uh, dear friends uh, raja raju twin brothers they were the brain behind the tank team we prepared the moped 100 cc 250 cc 350 cc lambda scooter and the two stroke era i won the first 350 race in chennai Then my moped, I won ten years on the moped. Uh, first, I won the RX hundred. I rode the three fifty TZ also. When they said, "Boss, this era is over after the four stroke," I never uh, gave uh, way. I said, "Yes, I will race the two stroke," and I also won the two stroke. You see, thanks to my dear friends uh, Raja Raju, the twin brothers who prepared the two stroke bikes, and uh, T D Raghu who sponsored uh, our uh, team, and we had raced all over India. Chennai, Bangalore, uh, Bombay, uh, Calcutta, Delhi, and we have won from 50 cc to the 350 cc all races we have won. So we have. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm interjecting again in between because we have a time limitation and we will have to. You have to give me some more. You have to give me some more time for me to tell uh, a lot of things to the youngsters. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will have to uh, do an entire session once again with you. Uh, yeah. continue from here because uh, there is so much to uh, learn from you and so much to uh, discuss 
and so much for you to share with us so uh, yeah. i think for that we will uh, do an entire session once again or maybe yeah. another session <laughs> one more thing when the people used to come from uh, the other stations uh, there's a gap of one week so people when they come from bangalore pune calcutta and all so we used to have a place called pitch stop see for for us to entertain the out station boys so we all used to get, get together exchange views see the the racing was very friendly those days very very friendly whatever i did i used to tell him whatever he did they used to tell us we used to get together exchange knowledge and uh, it was a, actually a, a very friendly atmosphere uh, those days and uh, i don't think so we will get uh, uh, that kind of uh, this thing anymore so 1989 Uh, racing stopped in solaram the golden era of uh, solaram is over so we we were all very lucky to be in that era to race uh, different kind of motorcycles and the, the that era is called a gentleman's generation everybody right. who helped us we have to thank everybody who had helped us and uh, i don't think so we will be um, able to see that uh, thing anymore in uh, in india racing is slowly uh, fading off because the the amount of speed we saw the bigger bikes people from abroad came all our bikes and all were performed now the new generation are racing all these 100 cc 150 cc 300 cc bikes so the crowd also is not coming to the track because they got other uh, priorities they want to see uh, facebook they want to see instagram they got movies they got this thing the all other uh, uh, activities are there so those days because there was no activity everybody used to come to solo and uh, we really enjoyed it and i uh, thank uh, and i thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this uh, program of course even if you give me one more hour i can tell you so many stories <laughs> no sir i am really sh- i am actually <laughs> sure that you will have so much to share with us because as very rightly said somebody has actually commented that you are an encyclopedia of uh, this entire experience and knowledge about the racing so before we actually go ahead and conclude it i have one uh, final question uh, to you if somebody is looking uh, forward to get into racing and make racing his career what would you like to advise uh, these kind of riders or no, not I, kind of the I, I'll, I'll, i'll tell you see after the solar ram race was over the new track was built so what we did is in in racing racing is one of the most costliest sport in the world people who have money will not have talent people who have got talent will not have money so that was the scene so what we did is we said we will uh, put an ad in the paper saying that we will uh, start a racing school the club the club itself will start a racing school and uh, teach all these boys and pick the talent so what happened is we put an ad in the paper 500 people turned up one day we had a we uh, the place 500 people turned up we we got a shock i said what 500 people have come to how to manage these people then we asked them who was all interested in racing we will take them to the track and uh, we will teach them so immediately a lot of people came they said we asked them how much are you willing to pay one fellow said 2000 rupees one fellow said 1000 rupees something like that it was not a money making thing it was only purely to teach these people so what we did is we got motorcycles from uh, tvs that is the time when shona shogan was uh, released so we asked uh, mr venu sinivasan can you give us uh, some bike he immediately gave 20 bikes so bikes we got then we asked mrf can you give me t- give us tires because the warranty is only tires so mrf immediately gave uh, tires for all these bikes the only expense was fuel so we said each and every person pay only 500 rupees we'll them give them 3 days uh, uh testing uh, i mean uh, uh, teaching uh, on the track that is friday saturday and sunday so this out of the 500 people maybe on 300 plus turned up uh, to the race track and we took them around the track and uh, half the fellows disappeared the first day itself they said oh this is a different ball game racing on the track is different riding on the road is different those fellows are all uh, road heroes they want to go and uh, do uh, <laughs> riding on the on the road <laughs> to show their heroism to all the girls and things like that that they can't do here because the bike is faster the corners are there you should know where to break how what is the the uh, apex of the corner where to break how to take a turn your body language all that they did not know so half the fellows disappeared so the second day again 
another 100 crores is finally the core people who are really interested in racing we got them we trained them and they became the champions of india and they went abroad they went to the far east and they raced there so that is so now in chennai we have uh, a lot of uh, racing schools we have this california racing school we have this uh, school from uh, uh, two store i mean uh, throttle wide open from bangalore we have a, a school so there are a lot of schools you can now there's a rule that every tom dick harry cannot come and race unless he goes and attends the school and gets a certification because everybody who came to the track they started falling they didn't know what to do uh, the proper uh, uh, training was not there so the schools they train them properly how to break all then if they are uh, satisfied they'll give a certificate then federation will give a license so without going and joining the school you cannot race now so everybody who races in the track now they have uh, the uh, certificate from the school authorized schools by the federation and uh, if anybody is interested they can contact the madras motor sports club or they, you can have the in the sites you have all these uh, racing schools you can go and join there they'll give you training then they'll give you a certificate with that certificate you can go to the fmsci they'll give you a license then nowadays people i'll tell you the new generation is very very lucky honda is got a, a team yamaha has got a team tvs has got a team so they have 2020 bikes you just have to just walk in pay them uh, whatever fee or uh, 1500 or 2000 whatever it is they'll give you the overall you race the bike you uh, finish the race give the bike there and you can come home those days the night and day we used to sit down prepare the bike no food nothing we used to take the bike from here all the headache is gone you just only if you have money pay them the money they will give you the bike and if there are 40 entries in one particular suppose you take honda there are only 20 bikes if there are 40 entries people have applied the best 20 will be selected the fastest 20 will be selected so that is how racing is it has become very easy now so the younger generation they can go and uh, uh, race there but only thing is what is happening is the younger generation they are all uh, uh, internet uh, kings they know everything they, each and every fellow who races here you ask him what he wants to be he say i want to go and race in motor gp the car fellow will say i want to become formula 1 driver the formula 1 driver and motor gp is not an easy job because we have been racing all this uh, 10 bhp 15 bhp 20 bhp straight away see i experience no when i started racing the bullet and when i sat on the tz 100 bhp i was not able to handle the bike you have to be reality so uh, slowly step by step you have to keep going so now the california racing school they give training on the big bikes the super bikes so slowly you can go and race people who have got the money now can uh, come and race here and they can go a little bit abroad initially they have to go to the far east because they are equal to us or slightly better if you go to the europe there has been circles around right so i think uh, there are a lot of uh, details and information which is already also available on the uh, internet that people can internet yeah it's a site yeah and they can go to the yeah. fmsc site they everything right. is available absolutely and as you have rightly said uh, that racing on the road is not something which is advisable if you want to race if you want to test your limits in terms of your capability your ex, uh, expertise in terms of riding and your ability of riding then go on the track try your luck over there and then you will know uh, See, where, where you stand no, no, so, racing on the road is also dangerous for him and dangerous for the other also innocent absolutely. people get uh, injured innocent people get injured True. so you should not race yeah. on the road uh, if you are, want to race come to the track burn your uh, energy there on the track <laughs> right so uh, cool sir thank you so much thank you uh, for giving us your time and i am sure uh, even uh, even if we talk for another one or two hours the excitement will always be uh, as high as it is right now and there will be so much to discuss with you uh oh, and sir. obviously because we have this is oh, the bike i ride now <laughs> is the interceptor i own an interceptor now and i keep riding the interceptor i'm very happy with the interceptor uh, very good for uh, the price what i paid is a song you cannot get a twin Absolutely. for this uh, money is worth so this is the bike i'm riding now i keep going to bangalore i keep going to coimbatore hyderabad bike and at the age of 70 i'll be sleeping 
suddenly at 4 o'clock, if I get up, I'll say, okay, let me go for a ride. I will go to Bangalore. My son will be searching, where is the daddy? He'll ring up, where are you? I said, I'm going to Bangalore, right? So I still keep burning myself on the road. So I actually wish that uh, when I am your age, I will be having the same kind of excitement and the energy <laughs> levels that you have. And yes, uh, yes. I'm sure a lot of, not, not only me, uh, most of the bikers would be uh, having that kind of expectation that they will just take up the, take their bikes and go on the rides and, wherever they want. And uh, we have gone for a ride in uh, our bullet because we have a lot of clubs here. The, the Royal Enfield have a lot of clubs all over India. We have Madras Bulls here. We go for a lot of rides uh, a month, once a month. Right. I've gone to Leh Ladakh. I've gone to China on the bullet and it will never let me down. And one thing I want to tell all the viewers, the youngsters, whoever wants any help, please do not hesitate to contact me. I will do whatever I can for the youngsters. If they want me to prepare a port cycle, free of course. Of course, I don't charge. Till today, I've not made a single penny on racing. Wow, that is how so that, because, that is the true bond of a bike and biker. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, what I feel is, knowledge should be shared. It should Absolutely. not be sold. It should Absolutely. not be sold. Whatever knowledge I heard, because I learned it from my elders. They taught me, so I will pass it on to the other generation, so that if you, they yeah. continue. True. If you hold it to yourself, it will be there with you yes. only. Yes, it will yes, not yes. be. It will not yes. go forward. That's great. Correct. So uh, great, sir. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, we would love we would love to have another session with you sometime soon. And uh, thank you so much. And this, this time I is not enough. You give me one more hour, I'll speak to you. I so much of uh, uh, this thing is there. I can always speak and give a lot of information about it. Absolutely. In the details about biking, preparing the Absolutely. bike, riding a bike. What what you should take there when you go uh, onto the racetrack. What is the See, two things are there on racing. One is uh, concentration. The second thing is consistency. So Absolutely. both these things are very, very important. Concentration is the present action. Consistency is your goal. If you True. have both these things, you will definitely be. Absolutely. So uh, with that, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We will have to conclude the session now. And uh, we will uh, connect with you once again. And we will share a lot of such information with all our audience. I hope, uh, this, I hope the session was useful and uh, useful for the viewers also. Thank you very much for the viewers. If they have any query, please, please do contact me. I will help them. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, say thank you to all the audience. And uh, I would like to conclude the session. Next time when we will come again with the, uh, with the Power Talks, we will bring some of the personality who will discuss some powerful thoughts. Maybe both are again. But we will talk about it sometime later. Till then, ride safe, ride hard, and if you want to race, go on the tracks. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Bye-bye.